Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to uh, everyone who available today. What I will do today, I will do, I will continue the uh, slide, the uh, notes that we uh, uh, stopped last week uh, in the uh, lecture number four, the AQ and virtual instrumentation. I believe that I can finish uh, the whole slides uh, until the end for today's session. And then I'll use the Daisy Lab uh, software to uh, to assist uh, whatever uh, explained in these uh, notes because we have to see in practical. Otherwise, uh, we cannot see the relation between uh, what F, what is uh, uh, explained in the notes and what is actually practically ha practically happen eh, during the measurement process in any instrumentation. Okay, uh, I'll share the uh, the notes. Okay, share screen. All right. Um, so what we we have stopped at this part. Let me check. No, 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 not here. Uh, yes, we stopped here uh, until this part, and then uh, we begin. We, we we begin the today. We begin with the digital signal processing. Uh, we have to understand the term, the terminology that I'll use uh, throughout the lecture, which is uh, first is time trace, uh, which is the time tracing that uh, visualize in any our our instrumentation. Uh, for our purpose uh, here in the class, we use uh, the Z Lab. So any uh, display, time trace display, uh, is a time domain uh, because it's time based. Uh, uh, the X axis is a time, and then the Y axis usually have uh, the amplitude, either in term of uh, 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 decibel or in term of uh, uh, magnitude uh, voltage, and then. Uh, uh, after the time trace, time trace is just a visualization of the information that we, I mean, if we do measurement, the thing that we measured is being visualized using a time trace and it is displayed in the our, our display element, uh, screen or if you use, uh, if you use needle, uh, needle. But for, for the case, for our case here, if you use a Daisy Lab, uh, the display is, you can use any, any, any uh, type of display. I used just uh, in the previous lecture, I used uh, YT chart, which is to show the uh, time domain signal. We also can show in terms of digital digital uh, meter. We also can show in terms of analog meter. Uh, we also can show in terms of, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, visual, huh? visual information, like a chart. Huh? Like a chart, like a like a uh, sometimes we we use a uh, um apa nama apa uh, I will show it after this. But after we we display that signal, we also need to store that one that signal. The storage is very important for us to make sure that we we set the optim uh, the optimized setting for our storage. I mean, if we choose very high sampling rates, uh, very high sampling rates, which is in one in one sample, I mean, one in one, let's say we, we choose 11,000 hertz, uh, 11,000 11, hertz sampling rates. It is actually 11,000 sample per second. So imagine 11,000 sample per second. If you choose, let's say, only 10 seconds, it's okay. 10 seconds, which means uh, you times 10. So we have a 110,000 uh, sample if you measure only for 10 seconds. But let's say you measure in one hour or one day, the whole day. So what happened to the storage? Uh, maybe you have, your storage will be full. 
uh, if you use a normal computer, uh, maybe end of the day, your your computer will get full with the information. For that one, we have uh, we, we we have a solution for that one. Either first, uh, we re reduce the uh, sampling, or we do some uh, kind of uh, a triggered measurement, which is we only measure if the event is happening. For example, in in earthquake, we we monitor the earthquake. Yeah? We only measure during the earthquake happen. Maybe it's happened about two three minutes. The vibrations, or maybe after uh, after wave. Huh? We have the first wave, we have second, third, third, third uh, fourth wave. So we only capture until uh, the earthquake happen. So it it reduce it it uh, reduce the uh, sampling uh, the the sample that we uh, we receive. We do, don't have to uh, measure the whole day uh, or the whole year if you want to measure the earthquake. We only measure at certain event only. Or uh, we we may, we we only store the the uh, post process data. For example, let's say we only uh, let's say we only interested on in the in the uh, uh, RMS value. RMS is the the energy indication of the signal. For example, the signal that you measure, you want to measure about one second signal. I, I, I remember, uh, I choose the exam example. One eleven thousand sample per second. Let's say in that second, in that particular second, you only take the value of RMS, which is in one second you have a signal. You only take only one value of RMS, one value on RMS, which is only one value, one single, one bit only uh, per one second. So we 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 only con convert from eleven thousand data in terms of magnitude into only one value which is one rms value so that one we reduce the the storage so it doesn't matter you you take uh, the data for the whole day or for the whole year you only take one data per second so it reduces the storage a lot but uh, if you use that method we will sacrifice the original signal the original signal will be deleted we only take that the processed the after process signal so that is a pro and con. Uh, you have to be smart. You have to know what kind of information that you want to store, what kind of information you want to process after we store. So this is up to your creativity. I'm going to show you this one uh, step by step uh, throughout the uh, laboratory session. I mean, from Thursday, we're going to use, uh, we're going uh, we're gonna to start using uh, Daisy Lab. Uh, probably we're gonna use uh, my lab in uh, vibration lab. Uh, I think some of you have done uh, uh, lab eh, in that in that laboratory, NVH lab. Uh, we're gonna meet over there. I'm gonna make sure that we have uh, uh, no session, no other session. So we have uh, uh, six big table over there. So uh, you have 19, 19. We're gonna uh, separate into groups. We're gonna use our own uh, computer for lab uh, for uh, Desi lab. But if you don't have computer, we already have the computer in the lab. So I make sure that you have a good experience uh, looking at this so that I will give you the AQ and then I'm uh, going to give you um, uh, census, uh, census. So that was happening uh, every Thursday. So every uh, Tuesday, we're going to look at the uh, example. I mean, we're going to look at the theory. OK, so I hope you understand the, the time trace, the display and the store in uh, and how to how to design all these things uh, in your uh, instrumentation. All right, so so I mentioned just now there's two two way we do it for a uh, three way. First, we collect data uh, continuously that will uh, sacrifice the storage and then you, you only uh, capture the signal by events and you also you capture the signal after what after processing so three types of uh, style or methods that you're going to use to measurement so i'm going to show you after this uh, each each one of each each one of it 
So let's say we we let's say we focus on the uh, continuous measurement first. Eh? So uh, so for continuous monitoring, we're gonna have a, a signal processing. The two things in digital signal processing that I always use. Uh, I mean, most of the uh, uh, people who involved in the signal processing, they're gonna use two things. Uh. First, uh, filtering and um, uh, sorry, uh, filter and windowing. Uh, windowing for uh, uh, a Fourier transform uh, to transform the time domain signal into uh, frequency domain signal. We're gonna see the frequency. So, so if we focus on the uh, waveform uh, processing. So this is the thing. This is the thing that we we do for waveform analysis. We have first we have integration. Uh, uh, integration is uh, if if we have, let's say you have uh, displacement uh, information. Okay, you know from vibration, the di displacement. If you want to convert, if you want to see the as velocity, you just only to you you just uh, only need to differentiate the signal. You can have the uh, velocity. If you differentiate again the two times the displacement, you're gonna have you will have the acceleration information. Or the same thing if you have acceleration, you use accelerometer. You're gonna this you're gonna see these things after this uh, accelerometer. If you got a accelerometer sensor, the information from accelerometer, the vibration, you can uh, uh, convert into velocity by integration. And then you integrate again, you're gonna have uh, displacement. So that's what the function of integration. Uh, some of the uh, uh, software have this function. Otherwise, you just you need to uh, manually calculate. <laughs> but uh, most of the software have this this uh, this function, uh, the integration and differentiation, and also the band pass filtering. This one. So band pass. Uh, filtering. Of course, uh, we have a low pass. I mentioned just uh, in the previous, in the last uh, lecture, when I am discussing about the aliasing, we have a uh, low pass, and then of course we have high pass, and in the middle we have band pass, okay, or band stop. Uh, we're gonna see these four type of filtering after this, and then after that we have a statistical uh, operation, which is RMS. I just mentioned just now about RMS, the energy content of the signal, the average value, the maximum value, the minimum value, standard deviation, the variation. Uh, all this statistical information is uh, telling us about the uh, about the signal. If the variance is high, we can imagine that the signal is have very huge variation, uh, change of the signal up and down is very high. Uh, if we have maximum value is high, it doesn't it doesn't uh, Actually, uh, reflect the that the signal is have high vibration. Doesn't matter. It, does, it doesn't reflect that. Uh, maybe when you say the in in one 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 uh, window of signal, it, it have uh, maximum value is very high. Maybe only one value only in that in that particular window have a maximum uh, value. Uh, so, but if you have a very high variance, that means your signal is vibrating a lot. Eh? Or fluctuating a lot. Uh, average value also, uh, if you have average zero, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that your signal is um, flat. Yeah. Average zero mean maybe we uh, it have uh, uh, equal value up and down. Huh? Mirror it have mirror shape no? up and down. So that's that will cause an uh, average. So all this statistical value actually you, you need to see all of it. Huh? All of it. The important of this one, see, uh, you have RMS average max mean standard deviation. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Huh? Uh, we have six information here. Imagine that we have one window, let's say one second window of signal. In that signal, signal we have eleven thousand data. You, you compile of of this data in terms of six information only. RMS average max mean standard deviation and variance. Instead of you have eleven thousand of data, you only can com uh, compress or you have you you can uh, uh, conclude that 
one second signal into six information only. So six data only. So it's reduced. So that's why uh, statistical information is very important when you do when you uh, try to uh, create a post process data. And then we have arithmetic. Arithmetic means uh, you have a uh, 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 operation uh, operation of the signal. Uh, you have you you have a uh, two two input the two channel of uh, uh, input. And you can do arithmetic. You can do operation between these two inputs. Uh, uh, and then logical, logical or logic. Uh, logic mean if you do uh, logic. I mean, I mean uh, uh, of course, if you do control, you must play with the logic. Uh, yes, no, okay, uh, or okay, true value, true false. So that's the logic. Yeah. So we're not gonna uh, look at that part uh, for the purpose of this subject. Okay, but uh, some university <laughs> provide the information of the one. Uh, I mean, in subject measurement instrumentation, they explain about the uh, the use of logic. Eh? But our scope is for the census, so we're gonna see. Uh, I mean, the first five information. All right. Uh, so now FFT, I have uh, discussed this uh, parts in the uh, theoretical in uh, lecture number three, uh, lecture three. Uh, about the uh, uh, signal analysis, uh, we have looked at the theory how to calculate uh, FFT uh, using uh, what we call that uh, Fourier transform. In, in fact, FFT means fast Fourier transform. Uh, fast Fourier transform is uh, it's just a Fourier transform, uh, basically in digital. In digital, we have uh, also DFT, digital Fourier transform. Uh, that one uh, uh, is advanced uh, uh, signal processing. But for this uh, Daisy Lab, we're going to use FFT uh, to make sure that we can convert uh, the uh, time domain signal into frequency domain. You look at the, the flow of the uh, of the signal. First, you have a time trace. Okay, that time trace, you need to go to windowing first. Huh? Windowing first before we go to the FFT. Okay, the first step I mentioned just now is from time trace, go straight to the display and you store it. Okay, you store that one. Okay. Another way is you go to windowing and then convert into uh, free uh, FFT. Okay, uh, free tra uh, Fourier transform, and then uh, you do you display the uh, the, the uh, frequency signal and you store that one. Okay. Or uh, you go to the uh, spectral processing and then you display and you store that one. So there's many routes. Huh? Of the signal, but we're focusing on this route first for the purpose of our um, our learning process here. Okay. All right. Uh, now, uh, I'm gonna show to the next. Uh, okay. I think I've mentioned. I mean, uh, I've mentioned this one in the theory, but just just to to recall this one. After this, we're gonna show this one uh, in Desi Lab. Let's say we have a one signal, one uh, one cycle signal, okay, one cycle signal. So of course it's only one frequency here. So in in time domain and frequency domain we're gonna see only one, uh, one signals here. Uh, so the amplitude A, okay, the amplitude A, okay, is uh, is actually this one, eh? four x not over p, eh? okay. I'm not sure what's p here, uh, but the x not is the uh, amplitude. But basically, if you look at the um, Daisy Lab, it converts straight away the magnitude of the signal into frequency. Yeah? If this one is uh, uh, A here, uh, the amplitude here, in the time uh, frequency domain, it will be converted uh, straight away the amplitude here. Unless you use uh, decibel, decibel have some conversion so that it show the lower value of amplitude. But anyway, uh, usually uh, in frequency domain, we're gonna not focusing on the amplitude. We focus on the the value of frequency here, the w, uh, w w not here, uh, w not here, the fundamental frequency here. So if we have one cycle, so only one um, uh, omega not sorry not w omega. One fundamental frequency. So again, this one have a uh, how many cycle in one second? In let's say this one second. Let's say the whole thing is one second. The whole thing here is a one second. Okay, the whole thing was one second. So this one is one cycle per one second. This one have uh, one, two, and three cycle. So which means a three, 
uh, let's say three, we have three cycle per second to three hertz. So compare with the first one, so we have three uh, omega omega naught. Okay, so this one have one, two, three, four, five. So five uh, cycle per second. So we have five omega naught. So only one, each one, this one, this one, and this one have only single uh, frequency. Same with this one, we have a single frequency. So imagine that we have a two frequency. We add it together. So we can, uh, we can have something like this. Okay. Uh, so if this kind of, this is a signal, a combination of a different uh, many frequencies. So it will show a lot of frequency. One, two, three, four. This one is actually, a, uh, we look at, we have looked this one in the example uh, in the class. Okay. We have a signal like this, uh, what we call this, a uh, 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 rectangle, rectangular signal like this. Uh. So we, we calculate using uh, Fourier transform. We can find that we have a, uh, a lot of uh, infinite number of uh, frequency content because it's, uh, uh, it's using a series, uh, uh, Fourier series. So we have a lot of signal. Only the difference is um, it have a different magnitude. Towards the end of the series, the magnitude become uh, lower and lower and lower and and almost uh, none, no 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 amplitude. But uh, the normal random signal has has a lot of uh, frequency. Okay, so moving forward, so this is actually a Fourier transform. I will not repeat this one, <laughs> but. Um, I'm going to focus on this one because uh, the one that we uh, look in the theory part uh, in the book is uh, continuous signal, analog signal. But this one we're talking about the discrete signal, uh, digital. So when we when we uh, form the signal, we form in terms of numbers uh, or window uh, or sample sample. Uh, because uh, in uh, discrete uh, Fourier transform, ato ataupun uh, uh, fast Fourier transform, uh, uh, it uh, transform the signal by by points, uh, by points from uh, time domain into frequency domain. So if we have a lot of points, so more points that we can co convert into frequency. Uh, I will not focus on that one because it have a programming inside it. I'm going to focus on. Sorry, uh, I have to add. I have to. Um, I mean, I have to show the uh, how it was done in Desilab, so easy for you to see. Okay. All right. So. Uh, okay. So this frequency domain analysis. So uh, usually after we got the uh, the frequency uh, frequency uh, spectrum, after that is up to us to to show uh, what in the display in term of uh, multiples uh, multiple display lah. Either we use we want to show in term of forward FFT, inverse FFT, waterfall. But our uh, subject scope uh, is not on displaying all the signals we we'll focus on the uh, 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 sensors so we only uh, covered up to uh, sorry this is the my cursor up to uh, FFT only yeah? frequency transform so we want to focus on just looking at the frequency yeah? uh, because some of the sensors uh, they are showing the frequency content of the signal so that's why we have to show uh, we have to uh, look up to uh, time trace and the FFT only. Okay, so forget about this one. And then, uh, okay, like I said, before we can convert into a frequency signal, we need to know the windowing. It's very important to know what's windowing. I'm going to show you after this. Okay, so we have uh, uh, we have two things to be uh, to look at uh, in this half an hour. First is the Fourier transform. Second one is windowing, and the third one is the uh, filtering. Uh, filtering. So we're gonna look all these three. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, after I show you the uh, uh, the uh, what we call that one uh, time trace or time signal leakage. Um, we're gonna see after this after we set the filter. All right, so I'm gonna open the uh, Daisy Lab. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, they're already uh, open. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, the Daisy Lab. Huh? So uh, for the purpose of uh, um, uh, this uh, the, uh, demonstration, I'm going to use gen generator. So I'm going to have three generator, which is three signals with different frequency as what we have uh, looked in the previous uh, class, if you still remember. Okay. So I'm going to bring in three uh, sig uh, gener uh, signal. Generator. Okay. So uh, I ho hope you can focus uh, on understanding the concept. Uh. Do not follow the step by step. Uh. Uh, you can follow the step by step in the class, in the lab later on. So I've, I'm setting the uh, generator into uh, three, uh, uh, sorry, uh, three uh, info information. So, okay, let, let, let me put uh, numbers. Uh. So this one is 100. I mean 100 hertz. Okay. This one is uh, 10 hertz. Okay. And this one is 200 hertz generator. 200 hertz. Okay. So like I like I shown in the previous slide, uh, for this signal we can do arithmetic. Eh? So I'm going to demonstrate to you what is uh, arithmetic. Uh, in in Desi Lab we can do arithmetic. Uh, just go to the uh, mathematics uh, uh, function or modules. Uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, process here, actually mathematical process, but I'm going to use arithmetic uh, to add all the signal. Add all the signal. Okay, uh, we're going to use all channels. So we have a, uh, we're going to use all channels. So now you have uh, two, we need to add one more. We need to add one more, which is Right, three. So we have three here. So we're going to add all this thing. So first we need to set up uh, the gen 10, gen 10 hertz. Set up first. So sine wave 10, 10 hertz, amplitude 4. So I remain as it is. Okay. And gen 100. So it means I change it to 100 hertz. Eh, sorry, no need to. Put sorry, I need to put this one as, as hertz. Uh. That's, uh, sine. Eh, sorry, sorry. It doesn't matter. No, 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 change this one. Sorry, sorry. My bad. Okay, so 100 and this one I changed into um, 3 hertz. Uh, 3, 3 amplitude, uh, 3, 3 volt. Okay, amplitude. Okay. And then this one. Um, uh, 200. And then amplitude is 2. Okay. Sine wave. All right. Uh, before I move further, I need to change the sampling rate. I need to set the sampling rate for this one. So to make sure that you recall what we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture. So this one have uh, 200 hertz. So that means uh, we need to set um, at least uh, using uh, if using Nyquist, uh, 400, uh, 500 hertz. Okay, more more than twice. But uh, to make sure it's, uh, we can see the uh, signal properly, I make it uh, uh, 10 times, more than 10 times. So 2000, uh, 2000, uh, let's say I put 5000, uh, 5000 hertz as the, um, as the sampling, sampling rate. So I go to the uh, measurement, time basis. I need to set the uh, uh, sampling rate. So I, I'm going to use Daisy Lab. Uh. I'm going to use Daisy Lab as the time base. Okay. So sampling, sampling rate is I set into uh, 10,000, uh, sorry, 5,000, sorry, not 10,000, 5,000, 5,000 hertz and the block size I'm going to use, um, sorry, I'm going to use uh, block size automatic, eh? automatic. So it suggests for 5,000 sampling rate, it suggests 2048. Eh? 
for the Desilab time base. Huh? So, all right. So for each uh, gen generator, I'm going to change time base into Desilab. OK. All right. So this one I'm going to use uh, time base into Desilab. OK. Uh, all right. This one also I'm going to use uh, time base as a Desilab. OK. So I've already been set up. And then uh, then we have uh, we add up everything. We put this one as zero and this one as one number one. This one. So all the signal here uh, flow into the arithmetic. So we, what, we, what we're going to do is in arithmetic we do a summation. Eh? Channel operations it is a summation. We add all the signal. We sum all the signal, and then it will become a, a different. A product of the signal. So I'm gonna pick up the uh, display body chart here. So I'm showing the time trace, huh? the time trace of the signal. We add all these three signals, three frequencies into one uh, single frequency. All right, so double click, I put auto scale and set everything, set everything else as a default. Okay and then run so i i restore all windows and then see the signal so this is actually a signal a time trace signal for three different uh input uh, for the three different uh, input frequency uh 10 hertz 100 hertz and uh, 200 hertz if you look at the signal uh it looks like everyone is uh okay i mean if you zoom in look at it uh, it's smooth, okay. Uh, no uh, sharp edges, so which means we have selected uh, proper sampling rates. Huh? But uh, remember, remember, if I can stop to make sure that we we get the uh, the sense what I have mentioned just now. The window of this one is uh, four hundred second. So if you still remember, uh, I'm gonna I'm try to relate with the um, the theoretical theoretical part. Huh? Uh, if you still remember, coding. If you still remember that we have where's the pen? Okay. Uh, T. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 sorry, sorry. I recall the notes. Huh? I put that in <laughs> I, I, I recall the notes. Huh? Uh, sometimes I, I confuse. Uh, okay, this one. Huh? Oh, this one. Ah, so TS equal to T over N, which is N is the uh, the block size, and TS is some sampling period, which is a sampling period related to the uh, uh, frequency uh, frequency sample sample frequency. So we're gonna take this one in the equation. So TN or sorry, not not, not TN TS uh, equal to T over N. Uh, which is and the uh, and the uh, 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 block size. So T is the time for window. So T S uh, times the N. Okay, the T S is equal to the uh, one over frequency sampling times the N. So uh, the T or the total uh, window, the total window of the signal. Okay, this is T. This is T from here, from here to here is a T. So according to this equation, T is equal to uh, N over frequency, uh, uh, sampling frequency. So our block size is 2048, 2048. Okay, I'm going to go to the computer. 
and divide by 5000, you're going to have um, this. You calculate by yourself and then you can see this one. Huh? All right. So uh, imagine that in, let's say, uh, 400 something, okay, 400 something, maybe 450, 450 uh, time, how many samples do you have in here? You have about 5000, 5000 sample. So let, let's say if we measure uh, for the whole day or the whole month, this signal, how many samples that we can we, we, we store at one? So it will store a lot of samples. So it, it will uh, sacrifice the storage. All right. Then um, we're going to do the frequency uh, transform. So we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, uh, windowing. Remember? Uh, from our notes, I, I, I open my notes again. If I can move towards the notes, uh, where's my notes? Okay, here. Okay, look at here. From time trace, you you want to uh, view the frequency. You have to pass through the windowing process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do do windowing. So I'm gonna uh, add window. So go to the uh, scene analysis. And then go to the data window. So this is I, I window, window the signal. Okay. I window the signal. I remain the uh, YT chart here. Make sure it's here. And then this windowing, I'm going to set up the, uh, the, uh, the, the setup uh, for the module. I double click. And then look at the block size. Now, remember the block, our block size is 2048. Okay. 2048. So for windowing, the original, the default setting, it only pick up only 512 only from the whole 2048. Eh? Okay. Uh, if I can, I can uh, uh, go back to the our uh, time basis. Okay. This is our setting. Eh? So 2048, the whole data block. So for for this one. We double click it only pick up 512 only to convert into frequency i don't want that to happen i will change into the same value so that it will pick up the whole the whole block the whole block and then after that it convert the whole block into the frequency not only pick up the whole thing because if i only pick up one portion the first 512 only so what what happened to the rest if the signal is um, uh, maintain the same sinusoidal shape. It's okay, but if random signal, I might missing the important signal. That's why I choose the same size. The the block size two zero uh, four eight. So I choose this one two zero four eight two. Okay, this windowing uh, type. There is a lot of windowing type. I'm gonna show you after this. Uh, uh, after this uh, this one example the three example of windowing function so that you can see the difference between each uh, function all right so i pre -ok click ok and then i'll go to the uh, uh, of course uh, frequency so after we set window you're gonna the window okay connect here so for this one uh, usually i just uh, remain at is as it is Make sure if everything is just in 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 here default value. I uh, don't have to change anything. Uh, okay. Uh, look at this amplitude spectrum. Uh. So it remain the same amplitude with the the time the time signal. If the time signal is four uh, four volts, it will try to remain as four volt as the amplitude. So I change the amplitude spectrum. Okay. Uh, if you want to change it to others, it's up to you. But for this one, I just uh, amplitude spectrum. Okay, all right. So then I okay to display. So YT chart display. Don't forget to put auto scale. Okay. So we have two chart here. One is a raw signal here, and the other one is after the frequency transform. Okay. Remember, we have to put windowing. And convert it to uh, Fourier transform using uh, Fourier transform uh, FFT, and then you view the signal. So we have a uh, three, uh, two signal. First is the raw signal, and then I click, click start, uh, click start, 
So we start. So now we can see you have a three signal. You can zoom in. First is this one. Uh, I can check. Uh, on the, let me check here. This one is about the uh, four, five. Uh, sorry, the customer number. Customer one. Not really accurate. Eh? I need to check. Zoom in again. Uh, all right. So, so this is cursor. Uh, let's see. About three point three. Uh, sorry. Ah, uh, this is F. Eh? Frequency is nine point seven seven. Eh? Nine point seven or ten hertz. Eh? Uh, ten hertz. Okay. Remember the amplitude is three point uh, nine something. Originally, originally we set four, isn't it? Four, four uh, volts, and the frequency is uh, ten. So it remains as it is. So I just uh, re, uh, say, uh, go back to the original shape, and you can check for 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 the uh, the other signal. It will sh uh, show the same value as what we have uh, set. So hundred hertz, and then this one a Y two point uh, three three something. So three hertz, we set three hertz, uh, three three volt as amplitude. And if you look at this one, the cursor number two, uh, 200 hertz and 1.99 or two two volts, uh, it uh, amplitude. So it tried to remain the amplitude, and it have uh, showing the frequency. So right now, I want to show you one more before I finish this session for the windowing. Okay. Yeah, where's the windowing? What we do is we I move uh, sorry uh, how to how to move this one <laughs> uh, 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 sorry ah uh, right namo tak pakai ni all right so so the signal is something like this eh? okay what window what windowing do eh? what it does is actually it try to uh pick up this area okay this is actually for for the sake of our example is 2048 data in here right we have 248 data in here we have a lot of data. It's two, four, eight uh, data. So if you look at here, it's un up to here is unfinished or un incomplete uh, cycle, incomplete cycle. So the system will not, uh, cannot calculate, uh, calculate the frequency um, properly because it have incomplete cycle at the end so to solve that problem what what they do is for each sample it try to make sure at the beginning of the start here in this part here and this part here it will start in zero uh, at zero value so it will show up like this it try to compress up to zero okay zero start with zero so it will show like something like this shape So it doesn't matter uh, how big the uh, signal. Let's say I move the one. Let's say let's say you have uh, something like this. Eh? Okay, signal, and then you window something like this here. Okay. So what we do is in the in the window, in that window only, by using a appropriate uh, shape of windowing, you're gonna start with zero, and you end with zero. Okay, so if you look at the our uh, our windowing, uh, if you if you look our setup windowing, so look at the windowing here. I use a rectangle, a rectangle, rectangle NOP, and I can use another hanging and 
flat top okay but we see in the in the notes it's actually yeah uh, it's actually the same explanation as what i have uh, explained just now look at this three shape of a uh, window function for handing it will uh, cut the signal it focus on the amplitude it focus on the amplitude okay the flat top it focus on the uh, frequency okay okay all right so the the shape here indicates uh, this one for sorry i i move away this one so the the flat top it try to do something like this flat sorry it have flat top okay all right flat top but it sacrifice uh like um some error into the amplitude okay but for the for the uh handing focus on the focus on the amplitude so is sharp sharper it have sharper uh, uh sharper a uh, top huh? so it focus on the amplitude so it in term of amplitude it will give a correct amplitude but in term of frequency it will sacrifice some frequency so that's actually the the uh, the uh, difference between flat top and handing okay so this is how the representation of uh both different between handing and flat top so handing give a narrow band shape not band shape block band shape uh, band shape so amplitude error will become lower oh sorry uh, i think um, i i i uh, wrongly in interpret that one so uh, for handing it will give a maximum amplitude errors of 60 percent so it have uh, it have errors in terms of uh, amplitude but flat top have uh, errors in term of uh, apa nama frequency so uh, in term of uh, 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 amplitude it have a lower uh, error for the amplitude so it's up to us to choose uh, flat top or handing is up to us we want to focus on the uh, uh, amplitude or we want to focus on the frequency all right so we almost finish this one. Okay, so the lastly, I'm gonna show you about the uh, uh, real time. So if you look at here, overlapping, uh, no, no, block size. What, what's happening is it try to block the, uh, block the signal 2048 and then it release the signal it block it try to capture that block and process to frequency and it release again so it delay one step it delay one step it window first and convert into frequency and release okay at the same time okay this one already released the signal the chart one just yeah, sorry the 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 raw signal already released the signal but at the same time the same signal will sorry the where's my cursor okay at the same time it convert first to the uh, frequency here so it have a delay one step okay one delay one step huh? uh that's why that's why uh in in original uh, setup it only pick up half of it so that uh, it pick up half and it will uh, quickly show that the results of the frequency transform so it will reduce the uh, the delay I reduce the delay so but for me uh, I'm focusing on the uh, uh, the correct information rather than delay so let's say two two zero four eight. Okay. Let's say I want to double double value here. Two zero four eight. I double so four zero nine six. So I okay. 
So what will happen is to the signal, if I run, it will delay two times, two seconds, two times. One, see, sorry, uh, again, see, oh, not in, uh, not really quick. I, I'll, I'll change this one. It's not, not really obvious. I change this one to 8192. The original is 2048, but this one, uh, I it it collect first. It collect up to 810, 8192, and then it release. You can see the difference here. You can see here, it's different. I run, it delay. See, it delay. I, I repeat, I show again. First claw here. And then so after that, it will re uh, release uh, the value here. Again, you have delay. So that's why uh, we can show a real time or we can show um, a delay value. It's up to us. But for me, if it, we delay, it will give more accurate representation of the data. So that, that one uh, is the effect of windowing. So I think um, I have finished the uh, this slide. Okay. So for this one, you can choose, you can choose a higher value here. That data window, you have to, you can choose higher value block size here or, and then to make sure it's not uh, delay so much, you, you can do overlapping. You can do 5% overlapping or 100% overlapping. It's up to you, up your setting. I want you after this in the class, uh, we're going to see this one in practical and then you're going to see uh, how we can uh, optimize the true value and also to make sure that we get a correct value, but we also do not sacrifice the delay in terms of processing. All right, so uh, I now it's 11 o'clock, so uh, I have to finish uh, our session here. Uh, so we finished lecture number four. We're going to focus after this the uh, sensing parts. All right, um, so with that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, see you on Thursday in the I will, I will let you know uh, which area, uh, which uh, which lab we want to see, either in BK7 or our NVH lab. I will let you know uh, in the early morning. So we we'll see you on 8:30 uh, Thursday. Thank you very much.